Hey guys, Superbro Mike here, and this is episode 2 of the Joey Drew Studio Archive, a mini-series where we return to the world of Bendy and the Ink Machine to recap its central characters ahead of a release of the upcoming follow-up, Bendy and the Dark Revival. In the first episode, we took a look at Sammy Lawrence, and in part 2, we turn our attention to Susie Campbell and her inky alter ego, Alice Angel. So sit back, relax, and let's get started with a look at Susie's origins. Susie Campbell was a young woman from out of town, and was very close to her mother. We gather this information from an audio log released during the run-up to the reveal of Bendy and the Dark Revival. This audio is dated August 2nd, 1932, and suggests this was the year Susie first began working as a voice actress for the Bendy cartoons. The work of a voice actress can be a tough one, Mama. You never know what you're going to be voicing next. But when you work for Joey Drew... You never know. It sounds as if she reported back to her mother on a regular basis, updating her on progress made while acting in the big city. Her new gig at Joey Drew Studios had her playing all manner of roles, from talking chairs to dancing chickens. However, a new character had just been created and required a female touch. This character was called Alice Angel. Joey Drew had high hopes for his first female cartoon star, Alice, Although she didn't quite reach the popularity of Bendy and Boris, at least judging by the merchandise sales coming out of a Heavenly Toys workshop years later. And if he really wants to be so helpful, he could be telling me what I'd be doing with this warehouse I got full of that angel, whatchamacallit. Not a scrap of that mess, he said. Nevertheless, Alice became a long-running member of the Joey Drew Studios roster, and one of the three main characters to feature in the animated shorts coming out of the studio. She even had her own episodes from time to time. Susie felt right at home voicing Alice, and thought she had found her true calling. This is the first character I've really felt a connection with, but she's a part of me. However, Alice wasn't the only thing Susie fell for while working at the studio. She also had a romance with music director Sammy Lawrence. I heard her talking with Sammy the other day. If I'd know better, I'd say there was magic there. We went into detail as to how this romance formed during our Sammy Lawrence archive last time, so check out that video for a more in-depth account. To summarise, Susie had graduated from playing bit parts to a lead role for a character she had fallen in love with, while working under the guidance of her latest crush. Things seemed pretty idealistic, but they were soon to change. As time went by, Joey Drew Studios fell from grace. Mr. Drew had become too ambitious and started funneling any profit the studio was making into the research and development of his secret ink machine project, believing that by creating a theme park populated by living cartoons, he could restore his once flourishing studio to its former glory. Joey liked to play victim in order to manipulate those around him, and Susie was one of his original targets. He took her to lunch one day to break the news. Joey divulged information about the studio's financial hardship to Susie so that she would be more willing to help him out further down the line. She had such admiration for her employer, a man who had given her such amazing opportunities in life, that she didn't realise she was being used. Susie was a sweet and kind soul, but also very naive. So how did Joey plan on using Susie? Well, as previously mentioned, Joey wanted to create living versions of his beloved cartoon cast. He knew Susie was the embodiment of Alice Angel. She had voiced the role for years, and fully grown into the character, to the point she had become quite obsessed with her. With this in mind, Joey knew if he could push Susie far enough into a state of desperation, she would do anything to remain working with Alice, even if that meant becoming her. Stage 1 of this diabolical master plan was to inform everyone a new voice actress would be taking on the role of Alice Angel. Well, everyone except Susie, that is. Apparently, I didn't get the memo. Alice Angel will now be voiced by Miss Alice Pendle. A part of me died when he said that. There's gotta be a way to fix this. 
Susie was devastated. Her former romance, Sammy, was now directing a new actress called Alison Pendle, and what's more, she was playing the role of Alice Angel. Heartbroken, she fell into a pit of despair, and of course, Joey Drew was there to pick up the pieces. Joey offered Susie the chance to become Alice Angel in real life, to be reborn from the ink machine and live on eternally as her favourite character, bringing joy to fans who were just as in love with a character as she was. I know how much this part means to you, Susie. Alice means a lot to me too. I want you to bring Alice to life once again. We must assume these experiments were conducted in secret, as most workers at the studio had no knowledge of the ink machine and what exactly it was for until it was too late. By this time, Susie Campbell sounded pretty unhinged and had in her mind already become Alice Angel, vowing to make Joey Drew pay if he double-crossed her again. But if that smooth talker thinks he can double-cross an angel and get away with it, well, oh, he's got another thing coming. Alice? Ooh, she doesn't like liars. Susie did become Alice Angel, or at least a version of her. While Joey technically kept his word, the result wasn't what Susie had hoped for. At this point in time, the ink machine was in its infancy, and experimentation was very hit and miss. Mostly creating the goopy subhuman searchers Henry encountered all over the studio, rather than perfect cartoon replicas like Boris the Wolf. When Henry meets Alice Angel for the first time during Chapter 3 of Bendy and the Ink Machine, she recalls her original birth. The first time I was born from its inky womb, I was a wiggling, pussing, shapeless slug. The second time, well, it made me an angel. Subjects reborn from the ink seem to lose a little of their humanity each time they are resurrected. So while Alice did manage to eventually take on a more faithful replication of the original character, by this time the insidious ink had taken hold of her soul and corrupted it. This is why she has a very Jekyll and Hyde type persona. On one hand, the good-natured Susie Campbell is still trapped within. But, on the other, we have a cruel and twisted version of Alice, born from the betrayal and psychological torment Joey Drew puts Susie through. This dark side of Susie's personality unfortunately conquers in the end. Are you ready to ascend, my little errand boy? The heavens are waiting. Oh, Alice, you are The living ink seems to bring out a person's most toxic and evil elements, if they give in to it. Before Henry arrived at the studio and entered Alice's lair, the angel had been hard at work harvesting hearts from Boris clones in order to become perfect. She believed the hearts contained the key to repairing her disfigured appearance and returning her to Alice's true cartoon embodiment. How she lured these Boris clones to their demise is a concept explored in the Bendy spin-off game Boris and the Dark Survival. We discover a selection of cassette tapes hidden within the corpses of dead Boris clones. These tapes are highly informative, not only giving us a window into Alice's mind, but also Susie Campbell's. The tapes tell the story of a woman in distress by the name of Miller. She calls out for help and leads her victims on a paper trail. Please look for my messages. They eventually locate the key to the room she claims to be held prisoner within, only for the truth to then be revealed. Miller is Alice, and kills whoever enters her well-staged trap. Listening to these tapes, we pick up on several interesting tidbits, which reveal how much Susie's past influenced her reincarnation as Alice Angel, as well as her gradually declining sanity throughout the process. This line reveals how close Susie was to her mother, and how she was raised to be a strong woman, and also someone who despised liars. My mother and I had only each other while I was growing up. She taught me how to be resilient, strong. I am not one to lie. I don't like when people lie to me. If we listen to these passages, we can sense Susie's growing paranoia and fear as she felt Ink Bendy and other dangerous monstrosities, such as the Butcher Gang, closing in on her. Hope is fading down here. The monsters are closing in. 
We know Alice feared death, as she states not wishing to return to the screaming well of voices that awaits her within the ink. Do you know what it's like living in the dark puddles? It's a buzzing, screaming well of voices. Bits of your mind swimming like, like fish in a bowl. I will not let the demon touch me again. Finally, these tapes recall how Susie's father was a butcher. She would see images of torn up animals while visiting the butcher's shop, and it's easy to see how witnessing these vivid and grotesque sights led her to become a butcher herself while embodying Alice Angel, removing hearts with ease. I saw so many things dismembered in my father's butcher shop, having images of myself ending up as they did, their bodies broken and pulled apart. The final message even seems to have a double meaning. While Susie is obviously using her acting skills to allow Alice to trick the listeners of her tapes, she is also hinting of her good-natured human side disappearing as the ink takes hold. There isn't much time. If you found my messages, here is my last one. Please come find me. Before it's too late. Of course, it was too late, and Susie had been completely swallowed up by Alice at this point. Eventually, her twisted mind sent her into a spiral of insanity, which ended in her sudden death, ironically by the hand of Alison Pendle, the actress who took over the role of Alice in the Bendy cartoons and also became a far more perfect version of Alice when reborn herself. But we'll save that for another trip to the archives. And with that, we come to the end of this look at Susie Campbell and Alice Angel. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.